This is a Pod Dealers Network podcast. What is TWS podcast uh, episode whatever? Who cares at this point? The rants of the vindicated. It's my podcast. I do what I want to. People, listen. Word, is it still live? It's not working for me, Rich. Right, we gonna keep going. I know I changed my voice at work. Bars on the radio. Oh, what is TWS podcast? Well, ready. I'm like just staring at my watch and I'm feeling so new school. Suicide attempts, how many tries to take? Damn, 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 damn. Yo, uh, hey, I'm gonna do it. Mama, mama, mama. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right. Uh, can't play for so much. I haven't done the music in, in such a long time. And I really stopped because uh, I was incorporating the video and doing the YouTube stuff. And, and YouTube is is very, uh, I don't know. They go at you for that kind of stuff. So I was cutting it out. But um haven't done video in a while. I'm still trying to rethink that concept and make sure I'm doing it the right way. I'm not just doing it to be doing it, but anyway, welcome to another episode of the What Is TWS podcast. As always, I'm your boy, J. Dot Flan, representing the White Pan Society. And, um, shout outs to moms. Shout outs. Shout out to moms. Uh, I'm recording this at the very tail end of Mother's Day, but I hope, uh, all the mothers out there had a, had a great Mother's Day. Um, and then shout out to everyone else, you know, who is listening. Like I, you know, I, I, I say every week, I have to thank you first and foremost uh, for taking some time out of your day to come share with me because you could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me, and I do greatly appreciate that. And uh, on a day like today, we we greatly appreciate moms. I had a weekend that has helped me further <laughs> appreciate mothers, um, and we'll get to that. Uh, let's see, a lot happened this week. You know, some things I'm not going to speak on because this is not my thing i don't like to um draw too much attention or continue to bring eyes to something that i don't it's just not my thing and not i don't have anything to say about it so certain things i won't be talking about but uh i did have an interesting week interestingly enough i had another like situation uh walking from work with another person. I, I'm going to do this real quick because it wasn't as interesting, but I'm starting to think it's got to be me. Like if, if I'm having run-ins with people on a consistent basis, um, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. But this time it wasn't lunchtime. This was after work. I was leaving work and I walk about a mile to um, a train station to catch the train you know, back home. Uh, I work for the transit authority here. And so I ride the trains and stuff for free. So I might as well take advantage of it. Anyway, I'm walking and uh, I'm walking on a, a fairly, in my mind, narrow sidewalk. And let me say, Austin is a very fit city. So in almost any street, there's a bike lane. And you have people down here that are like, they take it super serious. You know, they got the really expensive bikes and they wear the whole like Tour de France outfit, the, the straight spandex and they got helmets and stuff and they be riding in teams and taking turns doing the lead and and you know whatever they call drafting each other all kinds of stuff it's, shit is crazy but also a very sit, fit city streets are designed for bikes i'm walking on a narrow sidewalk i think you can see where this is going i'm walking and i got my headphones on i got over the ear headphones they are noise can they got the thing where i could um they're noise canceling but you could flip a switch and get like the ambient sound from around you. And I guess if you're walking down the street, um, you should have that turned on so you can hear what's going on around you. I don't because <laughs> I like my music loud and you don't get as much volume if you turn that on. And um, I'm trying to shut you up. I'm trying to shut the world out. Uh, so it defeats the purpose for me to allow the ambient noise in. And I'm on a sidewalk. Uh, I'm not in traffic. You know, I'm not in a high crime area. I ain't worried about nobody robbing me or, or gunshots going off and I don't hear it. Something like I'm not, these are not concerns. But anyway, so I'm walking and um, eventually I, I look over to my left and there's a guy 
on a bike uh, riding past me. And where I'm at at that time is like on a little curve of the sidewalk. So it, it, it's already narrow. And then like trying to pass somebody on a bike on this curved part uh, could be even more difficult. But this is the point in which this person is, I guess, passing me on their bike. And as they're passing me, when I look over, I can see they're trying to get my attention. Or they're saying something to me and they're motioning around the head area. And, um, you know, I guess like making a motion about something about my headphones. And it came across to me as if like maybe they were bothered by the fact that I had on headphones, couldn't hear them. And they, I guess I don't know if this is everywhere. I never been in the city that was this like bike heavy and like fit like this. So I'm not accustomed to that whole, like, there are bike people coming up on you and they're, like, ringing their bell or saying on the right or on the left, something like that. So, you know, a person on the bike is coming in to, like, hug whatever side of the sidewalk. I say I'm on a narrow sidewalk and it is a bike lane. So I'm not expecting a bike to be trying to pass me on this sidewalk. And especially in this particular portion of the sidewalk, it's like, why would you pick now to try to pass somebody on a bike? But whatever. The dude is, that's that's not the point. The dude is, is, is passing me, and he's doing all this motion and stuff, and I look over. And, you know, it takes you a second to register first that there's a person on a bike passing you, then that they are trying to communicate with you via hand signals, and I'm trying to interpret the hand signals. Um, and they're, he's still moving at that point. Like, he's, he's not stationary. He didn't stop next to me. Uh, maybe he slowed down, but he's still moving. So by the time I even registered that this person is trying to communicate with me, he's passed me, but he's still talking and still like making hand gestures. And then he he turns the corner. So he's like perpendicular to me and he's still talking. He's probably a good like 10, 15 feet away from me at this point, still talking. And at some point I see him like just like he makes a gesture that, that comes across as like, whatever and then he gives me a thumbs up and he you know turns the corner to the point where i can't see him anymore and by the time i got to the corner like he was he had disappeared so maybe it was an aberration maybe i did it was all in my head i ain't see it at all but either he took off and sped off on his bike because i was the only thing impeding his progress or something or he didn't exist in the first place but it dawned on me during this interaction it's like i don't know my, my immediate thing is who was right and who was wrong. That's where I go because I don't like to be wrong. So it's just like, you know, I'm on a sidewalk. There's a bike lane. You know, yes, I had on headphones and I couldn't hear. So if you were trying to tell me that you were on the right so that you could pass me, I didn't hear it. Um, at some point, I, I think that was apparently clear. Um, and so if that's a problem, then my bad. You know, I'm probably still going to do it tomorrow. So just as a bike rider maybe be aware of that and be prepared for it uh, but then it, it hit me that like maybe the it wasn't the right or wrong that bothered me it was the fact that your issue appeared to be that you were upset that i couldn't hear you and so you talked to me for an extended period of time for several seconds motioning and doing all kinds of stuff trying to communicate with me as i have still not taken the headphones off uh, and then you give me a thumbs up as if I was waiting for it, like as if I, as if I needed the approval. Was, were you talking to you were talking to yourself the whole time and you knew it because you knew I couldn't hear you. So what was the whole like, you know, I, I was extremely annoyed, especially with the thumbs up, like like as if I was was like, oh, he's angry at me. Oh, no, everything's OK. OK, he gave me the thumbs up. I feel OK now. No, I never even stopped to register to give a fuck about how you felt. Because you, you didn't stop. You continue to move. You're just making hand gestures and sounds that you know I can't hear. So if you were attempting to communicate with me, it was the dumbest, uh, most futile attempt I can think of. Um, and then that thumbs up just <laughs> just pissed me off. As if I don't, I don't give a fuck if you okay with the situation as you pulling off now. And like if if you somehow come came to terms to it through that monologue that you were having, uh, I don't know. I didn't need that. That was for you. You didn't need the thumbs up to me. So uh, if I see you again on the street, no, I'm going to have my headphones on and I can't hear you. And now I don't want to. So that's who we are. I got to, But it's got to be me. I, I, I realize in 
describing the incident to you guys that I'm an asshole. That I was the asshole in the situation. I still think this guy was an asshole, but I contributed to it. I wasn't a hundred percent innocent. This wasn't just a, a bunch of drunk girls riding past me screaming woohoo and not acknowledging the fact that I smiled back. This was a different situation. Like, you know, maybe I was in the wrong. I'm in the street. Not in the street. I'm on the sidewalk. Anyway, I wasn't aware of my surroundings. And uh, it, I was in the way or whatever. And, and he needed to let me know. He needed to have like a full on 30 second conversation with me while still riding his bike about me being in the way. I don't give a fuck. You got past me. The situation is, is the situation ended when you got past me. The continued conversation was for what? Especially with a person whose your issue is that he can't hear you, but you're still talking to me. And I have made no effort to remove the headphones from my f- head. None. Zero. I fucking hate these people. <laughs> I got it. Ooh, so I got I I talk to y'all so I can get it out. And now I actually feel dumb. I actually feel like an asshole as I've tried to describe the situation and make this person seem like the bad person. I clearly see where I was wrong in all this. So it's gotta be me. And uh I don't see myself changing. Anyway. That was uh my walking from work story. Uh what else happened to me this week? I have some I have some main topics I want to get to, but I'm trying to knock the other stuff out first. Uh Black Star dropped the album. Um, they dropped their, their, I guess, the follow up to their classic album. Uh, man, I can't even think of the name of the Black Star album anymore. But maybe it was just Black Star. Most definitely, Talib Kweli, our Black Star. I don't remember the name, if it had a name. But this one was No Fear of Time. And uh, it dropped on the third. And they did it in an interesting way. They put it on, uh, on Luminary, which is um, pretty much a like a, a podcast, you know, distributor. They have a couple of, um, not a couple, they have several original shows that they distribute and it's, it's a pay service. And so I've been listening to uh, the Midnight Miracle, which is Talib Kweli, Most Def, and Dave Chappelle, or Yassine Bey and Dave Chappelle. And then um, I also, every once in a while, I listen to Talib Kweli's The People's Party podcast on Luminary. And then they made the announcement that they were finally putting out this uh this second Black Star album, but it was gonna be exclusive to Luminary. And I was like, finally something that I I forgot to cancel is going to pay off for me. I like I got the Luminary subscription just to listen to Midnight Miracle. And then when that kind of slowed down, I thought it was over. I planned to shut it off. Um and I didn't. And, you know, so I got a chance to hear the the Black Star album. I kind you know, it's I understand why they released it the way that they did, you know, uh but Yassine seemed to be, you know, pretty adamant about wanting, you know, that this is this is art that he has put, you know, his heart and soul and this is his life that he's, you know, given you. And um, he wants to feel fairly compensated for the artwork that he creates and that, um, you know, when you look at monetization through streaming, you know, and, and I mean, and I see it as a person who's doing it, but not that I'm making any money, but uh I mean, yeah, you know, the amount of downloads or plays I have to put out to make any sort of money is is astronomical for someone who's just, you know, who who probably got like three people to listen to this show. So I'm never going to be profitable until I, I reach a, a bigger, but it has to be a substantially bigger audience, like it's just a crazy audience. And, um, you know, Yassine has made comments about like the fraction of a penny, like who who looked at a penny and decided that you could break it into pieces to be distributed uh, to the people who are the core of the art, the, the creators. Like, why do they get the smallest portion of this thing? And these are the people that this, these platforms couldn't exist if there wasn't art to put on them. That's a long discussion to have about just where the album got dropped. But the album is dope, super dope. Um, it's fairly short. I, you know, I, I thought it was going to be more, um, but I'm, I'm not trying to complain. I feel like if I complain at all, uh, most of it is going to show up behind me. And <laughs> Yassine is going to show up behind me. And like, I don't know. He's the, he, he wouldn't hit me, but he would have a stern. I would get a stern talking to and it would feel 
I would definitely feel as holy for that because I have so much respect and admiration for Yasin Bey. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great album. People are describing it as Afro-futuristic. I don't know what that means. Um, like I've heard it described as like futuristic, but having a vintage soul sound to it. And it makes sense, but I still, that the description makes sense, but it don't make sense. Like I hear those words together and that doesn't make sense to me. But if you were saying that to describe this album, I, I could see how those two words would come to you. Uh, but it is a dope album. Like I said, I'm torn about the 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 distribution thing because I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of people necessarily to talk to about it. And that's like my favorite part about music is like sharing it with people and then having conversations about it or listening to music together with people and stuff like that. And um, I don't really have that opportunity because of the way this was distributed. And I get it because it's you know that's his art. You know, he's that's their art. Um, they have the right to distribute it and receive the compensation that they feel is is due to them for it in whatever fashion um, they feel like doing. But I do wish more people had access to it right now. And I guess everybody has access access, access to it. It's, you know, are you going to pay for the Luminary subscription? If you're on the fence, um, I say do it just for this album alone. It's a, it's a dope album. Uh, I, also, I also miss... I hope that, you know, maybe we get a physical thing or there's some way I could purchase it. I miss owning music. It's like as much as I like this album, if I don't maintain my subscription to Luminary, then I lose access to the album. You know, and I've, I've realized now because I have a collection. I bought the card. I've been loading it up with like MP3s and stuff from my collection. And I've noticed that that like stops at a certain point, like there was a point where I stopped buying CDs and ripping CDs or even buying stuff from like the Amazon music store and downloading the MP3s. Um, there's a point where I stopped doing that and just strictly did uh, streaming services, Spotify and now now a uh, title. Um, but that means that all the music that I've enjoyed, you know, th that has been released and I've enjoyed past that point, I don't, I don't own. So if, you know, when my subscriptions in or if I decide not to pay title or run out of me, whatever, I just lose access to what feels like damn near a decade worth of music. Because it's been a while since I bought like a CD or bought an album. Like you just pay for a subscription service. So I kind of definitely old in that way. Like I miss owning music. Like, is that weird? It sounds weird to say own with music, but I miss owning music. Hmm. No Fear Time, dope album. Um, I wish I could play some of it, but that was, I, again, I feel like Yasin would just appear <laughs> and and do a finger waving, finger wagging type, I don't know, dissertation in my face, and it would make, it would hurt my feelings. But um, I digress. Moving on to the more major thing. This is. Well, at the time of recording this, today is Mother's Day. And um, I had a weekend, again, that I said, like, help me better appreciate mothers. So, uh, you know, this is, and this is part of the Chef Elise update. Out of Pepe! Um, this was my weekend with Chef Elise. And I want to say either Wednesday or Thursday of this week, I, I got an email from the school saying that a kid in her class had tested positive for COVID and they have all these rules and stuff about, you know, um, you know, if your child is vaccinated, um, and asymptomatic, then, you know, they don't, you know, they don't need to quarantine to come right back to class. If they're showing any symptoms, they need to quarantine for this amount of time. All of this was outlined in the email, but, um, and apparently this is like the 15th such email that they've sent this school year. And for whatever reason, the other 14, got past me. I only saw this one. So I reached out to my ex-wife and I'm asking her, you know, about Elise's vaccination um, status, which I'm sure she's told me already. And um, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I just glanced over, glazed over the information and didn't, didn't retain it at all. But I say that to say then Friday morning comes and I get a text from my ex-wife that, um, 
Elise woke up and said, you know, woke up early and said she didn't feel good. And, you know, she was trying to question whether or not she should send her to school or not. Um, and it was, you know, it was a little back and forth. Like, I don't, you know, I feel like if I'm not there and I don't see her and I'm not, you know, and I don't eat if I don't see her every day to be able to judge this behavior versus yesterday's behavior. Like, um, I don't know how to make that call, um, but I could tell, you know, she wanted some input in that decision because my daughter's hard to read. She's she's really good at knowing how to push your buttons and knowing like what scares you and what trigger words to use to to, you know, I don't know, throw you off. So you don't know when she's being dramatic, um, when she's really sick or when she's trying to avoid something. And I guess at some point in the morning it came out that uh, my daughter felt like she was being bullied by a kid in the school, uh, which pushed my buttons. And I'm like, you know, hitting my ex-wife, like, do we need to talk to the teacher? Do I need to go up there? Y'all remember Andrew. I went through the whole Andrew fiasco and Andrew might have been four or five years old. Now we're talking about six, seven years old. You know, I feel a little more comfortable jabbing him if I need to. So I wanted to nip this situation in the bud. Turns out that bullying in Elise's mind is like not playing with her when she wants to play or, I don't know, being mean to her or saying something she doesn't like or not sharing something with her. It doesn't necessarily mean the kid is like physically doing something to her or calling her names or anything like that. So I got to relax a little bit on that one. But so the, the decision was made that, you know, Elise might have been, you know, exaggerating what was going on because she didn't want to go to school. She didn't want to deal with this kid. So anyway, you know, we ended up sending her to school. And so after work, um, I go pick her up from school like I do on our on our weekends where I have her. And um, I get to the door of the daycare. They don't really let you in. You like come to the door, they see you and then they send your kid out. And so I could see her coming toward the door. And normally, you know, the moment she sees me, it's like, there's daddy. And she's excited and she comes to the door and we hug and then um, and then she just starts talking and then she doesn't shut up for like two days. Like it's just nonstop. Daddy, daddy and daddy, you got this. And daddy, guess what? And daddy. And, I, you know, you love it for like the first 15 seconds. And then when it's just I've had Uber drivers like be like, she can talk, can't she? I'm like, yeah, she sure can. And you getting ready to drive off. I'm still stuck with it, bro. So um, she can talk. She goes, and I love it, but it is annoying. But this time, I could see as she was approaching the door, like, I didn't, I never saw her perk up. So I'm like, man, is she mad at me? Is she upset about something? Um, she came out to school. She told me her backpack was heavy, so I took it off of her. Um, and we got in the car, and you know, the moment that she got in the car, she was just like, I'm tired. And uh, she laid down, and she went to sleep. She slept the entire car ride. I'm like, hey, something's wrong. And we get to the, we get to my apartment and um, I show her the car and she's like, she's participating. Like, she's not like, I don't want to do, I don't want to, I'm not in the mood for any of this dad. I'm sick. She's just, you know, like, she just seemed like she's over it. Like, I just really don't care. But if you want me to see this car, I'm going to go look at it, daddy, because it seems to be important to you. So let's, let's go do this. So she went and looked at it. She got it in the car and sat down. Like she went through the motions. It definitely didn't. At no point did it feel like she was like, "Oh, this is a nice car. I like this, Dad." It was just like, "Okay, I am. all right. This is your car. All right. Look. Oh, I'm getting in it. Look at me. Oh, you got a car seat in here already. Oh, let me sit down in it. Is this what you want? All right. All right. Is this enough? Have we done it all right? I've seen it. I like it. Oh, oh, sunroof. Yeah, that's real cool, Dad. Thanks for showing me that. Um, are you good? Cause I'm good. And so we get out the car and I take her upstairs and um, again, she gets in my apartment. Normally, there's stuff to do. She gets in like immediately. That's, you know, stuff. She's just going, going. This time she, you know, turned left, went straight up the stairs, got in the bed. So like clearly um, <clears throat> she's not feeling well. I just don't know to what extent. Um, I let her rest for a bit. And then uh, I eventually go up there and uh, I decided I need to take her temperature. I took her temperature. She had a fever of 103. And so um, I started to freak out. I started to freak out a little bit. And mostly because, not because I, well, one, because of the 
the COVID alert that we had been given. Um, and then, you know, I've never had her sick, like solo. I've never, you know, I've, I've dealt with her when she's coming back from being sick. Like, you know, I've gone with her mother to the emergency room. I think when she had the flu one year and then I stayed with her when we came back out of the hospital, um, for a couple hours, you know, not any real extended time, uh, but we were out of the woods. Like they had done what needed to be done in the hospital and they were, it was just keeping her hydrated until she felt better kind of situation. This was like, she's sick. It could be serious and I need to handle this situation correctly or it's bad. And I already feel like dads are like the, uh, you know, the lesser parent. So like, I can't fumble the ball cause I'm, I'm holding it down for all dads ever yeah especially black dads and yeah i'm letting her mom know what's going on and um you know and she's asking me about calling the nurse and it's like i, I don't know i don't want to overreact and, and it's, it's like i said it's a weird situation because when when we were together you know i got to be like the straight man like my my ex-wife could freak out she could be the person that freaked out and um and she was going to you know over she was going to Air on the side of caution and, you know, and, and baby her or whatever you want to call it, be very nurturing and stuff. And I could be the one like, oh, it's nothing, you know, just let her do this or she just needs to sleep it off or, you know, if she's throwing up, she needs to get it out, just let her get it out, you know, and we could, we could balance it that way. Like I didn't need to freak out because I knew if not, even if I did nothing, my ex-wife was going to do too much, which was going to be enough, if that makes sense. If I did nothing, she was going to be too much, and that would be enough. If you know what I'm saying, like that's. But in this situation, it's whatever's going to happen is going to be me. I got to do at least enough, you know. Maybe not too much. I don't know. I'm freaking out. Um, and so yeah, I we made it through the night. I, I eventually got her some Tylenol, and um, she threw up a couple times, and I had to clean that up. But I say all that to say, and, and, and you know, at that several times during all of this, you know, I'm, I'm staying in communication with my ex-wife and, um, and she's, she said, thank you for taking such good care of her. And in my mind, it's like, you do this all the time. Like as stressed out as I am, as, as much as I'm freaking out and as much as I am worried about, you know, my baby, you know, and making sure nothing happens to my baby. I had to give her a COVID test. I had to do the nose thing, you know, and that's just, man, that's heart wrenching. Like, cause you know, you trying to keep a steady hand and you don't want to stick jab something all the way up into her brain and she can't stay still and she's crying and she doesn't want you to do this to her, but you got to do it to her. And, oh man, it was tough. It was, and I just have to, and the whole time, you know, thinking to myself, like, this is just a random coincidence that on the weekend you got her, she got sick in the six, seven years she's been alive, you know. I say six, I know how old my daughter is, but she's in between six and seven. So shut the fuck up. Um, and the time that she's been alive, like this has happened several times. And most of the time you, you weren't around. Uh, and, you know, her mom is taking care of this and moms take care of this. My mom, you know, took care of me through all of the illnesses and stuff that I had. And, um, you know, sometimes I like to, I, you know, I don't like to, but, I have discussions with people about like my horror story from from labor and delivery. And please don't shoot me. I understand that what I went through in the labor and delivery process is nothing compared to what my ex-wife went through. That does not mean I didn't go through something. That's all I'm saying. I understand it pales in comparison. It, it was a spa day compared to what she went through. But I went through something. And I was sometimes talk to people about that. Um, and yeah, it's just, but again, like, you know, what that, that feeling of like helplessness and I couldn't, you know, as much pain as I saw my ex-wife in and, and, um, they got the heart monitor. They had heart monitors on Elise while she was, you know, in still in the womb. And I can, I'm watching the two heart monitors for the two people that I care about the most in the world. Like, 
And it's, it's, it's crazy. And you just feel helpless and you can't do anything. And so I know that feeling and I could just, and I had that feeling this weekend when it's just like, I don't know what's wrong with her. If I make the wrong decision, if I, you know, if we don't take her to the hospital when we should have taken her to the hospital, if, you know, if I give her this Tylenol, is that going to upset her stomach, make her throw up? And then she's going to be dehydrated and coming back from dehydrated. I got all these things going through my mind and it was crazy thing for me. And just moms typically do that all the time. I I said, I know my mom went through a lot of things with me and illness and, um, you know, in situations where doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. And I can't imagine what that must have been like for her to watch her child be as sick as I was. And nobody knew what was wrong with me. Uh, and then for her to have to keep going, like to keep going and, and make sure I was taken care of and fight with doctors and take me to several doctors to figure out, you know, for until somebody could say, you know, this is what it was. Uh, can't imagine what that's like. So shouts to mom for, uh, for doing all that stuff, for taking care of us, you know, everybody's here. Everybody that exists on this planet is here because of, you know, the sacrifice that a mom made at some point. And, uh, it's dope. It's dope. So yeah, I had my little dose of, <laughs> of, of trying to play mom this weekend and I survived it. And again, I got like the pats on the back for surviving it. And, and, and women, I want to say again, the pats on the back, the dads receive, for doing basic parents and stuff is not praise. It is a backhanded diss. It's, 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 it's completely, um, it's the most patronizing thing you could ever do is tell somebody, oh, is that, you know, give somebody a cookie for doing what they were supposed to do or what other people do every day. But because you a dad, it's, it's amazing because nobody, they don't expect shit from you. People think you're not capable of it. And I am in that group. I wasn't sure if I was capable of it myself, but, um, we made through it. We made it through. And, uh, but it just made me realize that your know, mom is making through all the time. And, uh, you know, most of us are here because they, they track record for, you know, their record for success is, is unparalleled when it comes to this type of shit. And it's not easy at all. Yeah. My mom and I talked a few times this weekend and, you know, it's, I think I, I've told the story just a couple episodes ago about her, you know, putting me out and sending me to my dad's house and me doing the, the ghetto Indiana Jones thing under the, under the garage door. But, uh, and we had it, and there were just, just so many stories like that from my childhood. My mom and I just butted heads, you know, constantly. Um, but there's so many, you know, I, I don't know. Um, as, as annoying as it was, you know, at this point, as at 40, I'm constantly telling somebody something, what my mom said and what my mom said, and uh, I'm passing on stuff, you know, to my daughter. Um, I'm quoting her in the show all the time. Um, and we talk now, like, constantly. And the, and today she was, she was such a mom, you know. I called her today to say Happy Mother's Day, and Elise was here. And I'm telling her about Elise being sick and everything, and, and she's giving me advice on, you know, what I need to do. Um, you know, as she gets better to make sure, you know, there are no setbacks and, uh, talking to her about Elise and I having tea parties. And before the day was over, my mom was on Amazon, you know, you know, asking my opinion on tea sets and she, she just ordered two tea sets for Elise, you know, on her day, on mom's day. But, and I, I wanted to stop her, but, um, I had to kind of realize that. Like that kind of stuff makes her happy. And that's, I mean, you know, who couldn't love you know, human beings that derive happiness from caring for, from caring for and, 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 and nurturing others and doing for others. Like, and that's, that's just moms in a heartbeat, you know, in a, I don't know, fumbling over my words. Maybe I'm a little emotional or maybe it's late. I don't know. But, uh, Shouts to mom. Shouts to my mom. Love you, mom. Um, I thought about like calling her and recording it for the show, but one, I don't want to uh, exploit my relationship with my mother for monetary gain, and two, 
she might say some crazy shit. <laughs> and I don't even, I think even if I told her, like, mom, record, you don't say nothing, that might work for like the first five minutes. And then five minutes later, she's going to say something. And I don't like to edit. So that made that decision for me. But I hope everyone out there, all the moms out there, had a happy Mother's Day. Um, hope everybody had a good week. I hope if, if you get a chance, you listen to that Black Star album. Um, I hope you don't run into me on East Fifth Street in Austin because that seems to be the place where confrontations happen for me. Uh, so if you see me, just uh, catch me on another street, not East Fifth, not the good street for me. Uh, what else? I don't know. I just I want the best for everybody. I hope everybody's cool. I hope everybody can learn to disagree without disrespect. Some things that have happened that have been highly, um, I don't know, divisive. You know, they've been, you know, they're, they're people that are, are are completely diametrically opposed on, you know, certain events. However you feel about it, um, you know, just, you know, you don't have to put the other side down to make your point clear. I think if you can sell me your point, sell me how, how truthful and honest and, and correct your point of view is without telling me how stupid and asinine my point of view is, you have a much better chance of, of, of pulling me to that side or convincing me that you're right. But if all you can do, if all you can do is tell me how dumb I must be for thinking how I think you, you've just created the enemy and that's unnecessary. So if you have a point, tell me, tell me what's great about your point. Not what's fucked up about mine. Tell me what's great about yours. And then we can, we can have a discussion from there, but disagree without disrespect. I think we can do it. I hope we can do it. I know we can do it. But with that said, normal calls to action. You know, my man, Zaya Fitness, hit him up, livealphafitness.com. That's L-I-V alphafitness.com. Um, he can get you where you need to get be with your nutrition and fitness goals. I'm trying to lose some weight in preparation for this uh, pod fest um, Memorial Day. I just went through and, and set up my agenda, what classes and stuff I'm going to go to. So I'm look, really looking forward to it. But right now I'm talking about <laughs> Zaya Fitness, livealphafitness.com. Hit them up. You can get you where you want to go. Um, and then it is it's still the summer of the algorithm. I'm doing swimwear this year so i got bathing suits i got swim trunks i got the t-shirts i got the definition t-shirts i got the for the algorithm t-shirts um there's always the logo stuff i think they're all dope and um you should get one so me and elise can go to disney world or something she wants a barbie dream house donate to the barbie dream house fund you don't gotta donate you can buy a shirt same thing you get something i get something or at least get something but it's a win-win see I, it's a win-win nobody loses it's impossible. But with that said, uh, if you like what you heard here today, please leave a, a, a like or a review. Subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any of these uh, dope ass rambling episodes. I do them every week at the last minute, but they I'm consistent. It's coming. You know, you can count on it. It's going to be there. Uh, and consistency matters in parenting and in everything else. But until we speak again. Be safe, be easy, be the light, and know this if you know nothing else. Me and your mama love you. All right, holla. <laughs>